Hello everyone, it's Nadine. Today we'll be testing out the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blue Blood Eyeshadow Palette. As you beautiful people know, this is about the product, not the people behind it. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. So, how is everyone? I hope you're having a marvelous day and that you aren't feeling blue, but Oh god, that was terrible. Anyways, I hope that you're at least not like me and feel like you're gonna fucking die from allergies. Shit on a shingle, my eyes feel like they're gonna fucking come out of my head. So, I'm just gonna warn you now, the look that we'll come up with today might be on the lighter side. I mean, I say that now, but we'll end up looking like Trixie Mattel. But I am very excited to review this, which I have no idea why, because I do not like blue at all. A few days ago, I reviewed the Blue Blood Lip Kit, and a lot of comments were like, yes, Nady, I fucking love blue on you. I don't know if y'all were just being nice. I mean, thank you if you were, but maybe blue is something that I might have to explore a little bit more. I haven't done this much of exploring since my freshman year in college, <laughs> but I did order this little bitch and all the highlighters from Beauty Bay. Not to direct traffic from Jeffree Star's website, but holy shit, that was the easiest checkout I've ever had. Like, every time Jeffree launches something, for like the first half an hour, his site is completely crashed. And a lot of you come to my channel for Jeffree Star reviews, so I really want to make sure that I get it. And I love Beauty Bay, but I didn't know you could buy things from there and ship them to here. But one of you suggested I check them out. I did. Their site was completely fine, and it was free two-day shipping. So snaps to the good bitches of Beauty Bay. Anyways, I gotta say, I do love this packaging, but the paper kind of feels cheap. I mean, people are always gonna throw this part away, so why spend extra money on it? But it has a wood texture, and it actually reminds me of the Graveyard Girl collaboration. I think that was with Tarte. I believe her box had a wood texture too, but I guess I understand this. It is supposed to be like a coffin. And not that it really matters. I mean, honestly, who gives two shits, but in person, the wood texture just kind of looks cheap. The rest of it looks great, though. The blue blood is raised along with the logo. We have a nice silver foil stamp trim around the edges. I mean, it does look nice if you're wanting to keep this. It is kind of cool. It just feels really flimsy. Let's go ahead and open this up. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh. Okay, so if you've watched this channel, you know that I typically do not fuck with big, bulky packaging. In fact, I hate the shit out of it. For the normal person, it's probably fine, but I literally have, like, 500 pallets that I have to store. And so to find room for this big ass thing, I mean, I'll gladly do it. This is beautiful. <laughs> but here we have it. Normally I say bigger the better, but this is not a peony. And really, even though it is big and clunky, I do like the looks of it. It feels good quality. I don't know what this is, like maybe thick cardboard or wood or something. I don't know. But she is definitely a sturdy ass bitch. It has a very nice kind of soft blue closure. The back has minimal writing, really only the things that legally have to be there. Blue blood does have a texture. I really can't tell if it's going up or down, but it just feels different. Well, what do we have here? I see a little weenie. Oh, it's Ron. God, did I love you so much. Say hello. Don't look so sad. Look at him. He looks miserable. You'd never know I spend more money on him than I do myself. Oh, look at his little foot. Oh, you're so handsome. You're the goodest good boy. Mm. Oh, he got your snoot. Mm. Oh, all right, baby. Go back to sleep. Sorry for waking you. Anyways, before we hop onto the website and see what people are saying about this, I did hear that there was a little bit of drama with brands supposedly copying the blue theme. I am not a drama channel, nor do I really pay attention to anything in the drama world, but I feel like people don't really know how long it takes to put out a palette. Like, I know a few big brands have come out with blue-themed palettes, like, all at the same time. Tarte being one of them, and yes, I will be reviewing that palette. I have that bitch around here somewhere. But unless these companies are all going through the same factory and have some kind of inside eyes, there is, like, no way that from the time Jeffree Star announced this until the supposed copiers came out with their palettes, there's just not enough time for a company to hustle and come out with a product that fast. I don't know if it's just coincidence dental that all these companies are now coming out with blue themed palettes. I mean, honestly, as long as it's not a red themed palette, I'm okay. Or goddamn, another nude one. Ugh. Maybe companies are just good at forecasting what's gonna be in. I don't know, but do I believe that everybody is copying this palette? No, at least not the ones that happen to come out around the same time as this one. But even indie brands happen to be coming out with blue palettes. Like, I think Menagerie Cosmetics, that's a company that I absolutely love. I think their new palette is called Whale Song, but it's beautiful, bold, and blue as well. Anyways, we don't need to dig into it more. I just thought I'd give you a little insight because honestly, people seem to think that it takes like two days to come out with a palette when it's literally like eight to 10 months. Or at least usually, I'm just over everybody trying to cancel everybody. Can't we all just get along? In fact, tell somebody they're beautiful today and give them a hug. Spread the love, goddammit. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop onto the website. Really the only one that I'm seeing actual star reviews on is Beautylish. So we're gonna head over there and it looks like this has four and a half out of five stars. Not too bad. The lowest review on this website is three stars. They say it's a beautiful concept. Some of the eyeshadow pans 
were bent and loose fitting, but nothing was broken. And they have to put down a fuck ton of primer in order for the shadow to look like it does in the pan. Another review says, gorgeous, but it flakes so much. They love the colors and the results are amazing. But even just a light tap on the pan leads to chunks breaking off. And you know what? Because these are shipped from his factory, I'm guessing. I don't know if they're shipped in temperature controlled conditions. And so it kind of makes me wonder if maybe some of these got really, really hot and that's altering the formula. Flaky little bitches. Sounds like my first couple boyfriends. Quite a few of these reviews are saying that the pans are coming out of the palette completely. Otherwise, the colors are beautiful. Ooh, that's kind of a bummer because I feel like he spent a lot of money on this packaging. The higher reviews say they love the palette, but it did come damaged. What the hell? Three of the pans were coming out of this thing. Ooh, God, that does not sound good. This review says there's an art that broke spotted the cosmetics of the frame. Mmm, honey. We'll just ignore that review. Product arrives safely in big giant bubble wrap. The only downside is that it does have a chemical smell. No need to ever have another blue palette. This is their ride or die bitch. Oh my fucking god. Almost every review on here, five stars or not, has said that pans are coming out of this. Oh my god, that scares me. I don't hear any shaking. That's gotta be a good sign, right? I don't know. Let's open this up and see. God, I really like that closure. That's very nice. All right, here we go. Oh my god, open up. What the fuck? It won't open. Oh my god. There's more suction in there than a damn dick pump. Anyways, here we have it. It is definitely blue. Oh, but I do see what people are saying. Some of the shadows are kind of coming out. Fortunately, on my palette, it's not super bad, but you can just see that some of them are kind of raised. And every time I saw this online, I just never was inspired by it. I thought the placement just left a lot to be desired. And so I was really hoping that once I see it in person, I will come up with all these ideas in my mind. And I guess the more that I look at it, the more it's appealing to me, but I think I'm just telling myself that because it was 52 bucks. I don't know, maybe it's the placement of these that might help, which really, that's completely personal preference. I don't know, I don't hate it, and really, for 52 bucks, this is a lot of shadow, and the packaging is really good. And I do really appreciate the fact that even though this is a blue-toned palette, there's other shades, like here's a couple minty greens, there's like pinks, there's an aqua in there, which I kind of think is where the original blood sugar palette went wrong. I do love that palette, but honestly, they all blend out to be like the same exact color, and so at at least with this palette, you can use more than two or three shades. Ugh, oh, damn it. I think I fucking love this. And totally for all the wrong reasons. Not because I want to make looks out of this, just because it's really pretty to look at. Honestly, I would be okay with, like, never using this and just keeping the little stamps in there. Because just going off the color scheme, this isn't gonna be something that I personally will reach for very often. It does have a few nude shades in there, which are nice, but I also have 50,000 nude palettes. So, though it's pretty, it's definitely for a specific customer. Any fucking who, I've decided decided that yes, I think it's pretty. Is it something that I'm probably gonna reach for after this review? Truthfully, no. But that doesn't mean I'm not totes moist with excitement over the fact that I get to do a look with this. So let's go ahead and swatch this beast and slap it on my face. You guys know the song, are you ready? It's swatch and ta ha ha ha. And here we have the first grouping of shadows, which I apologize, these names are very, very difficult for me to read. This fabric gets super dirty very quickly. But I believe we have Cullinan, Mint Tea, Crystal Flesh, I'm Cold, Untouchable, Priceless, Power and Blue Blood, and just like I thought, Mint Tea and I'm Cold kind of look the exact fucking same. I don't know how they're reading on camera, but in person, there's no difference between them. I am not shocked in the least based on the last Blood Sugar palette, but everything else seemed to swatch pretty okay. They're not the most pigmented shadows in the world. I did kind of have to swipe over them twice, and this is over a primer, but I do quite like Crystal Flesh here. It's a very, very, very soft formula. Like, I totally destroyed the pan. Like, even if I just touch the pan, I get full pigment. Like, shit, baby. But so far, at least swatching-wise, are these anything magical or amazing? No, not in the least. I'm really hoping they work super good on a brush, though. And here we have the last grouping, which is Deceased, Ice Tray, Blue Monday, Flourishing, Wealthy, Celebrity Skin, Entitled, Ocean Ice, Cremated, and Heartbreaker. And this time, I actually swatched them while the primer was a tiny bit wet, and holy fuck, did that help. It totally made the mattes quite a bit splotchier, but it made the pigment come through like crazy. I'm not really sure if that's cheating, but I I do remember somebody saying that you have to put a shit ton of primer on in order for these to actually be saturated in color. And they were right on that one. Like that first grouping I thought was terrible, but these, these are pretty good. I mean, these two look very, very similar in person. I really don't know that they'll blend out to be that different, but otherwise these shadows seem all right. I don't know if it's just my skin, but these little hoes want to stay with me. Why? You would literally have a better life on this rag. But I've scrubbed and scrubbed my hands 
with both oil and this makeup remover, and that is sticking. You guys will have to let me know down in the comments below if you've experienced any staining from this palette. Pull out the exfoliation brush here. Oh, I could kind of get the blue off, but this shade, what was that? There aren't any purple shades in here. I don't know, but I mean, I guess it's not a big deal being on my hand. I mean, trust me, it'll be rubbed off by tonight. <laughs> Wait, that shadow was Blue Monday, which does kind of have like a purple undertone, so it makes me wonder if this is a pressed pigment. Let me see the ingredient list here. Blue Monday, where the fuck are you? Fucking God, I can't even read this. I don't have my glasses. Okay, well, it is what it is. It stained my palms, so maybe it'll stain our eyes. Enough of that bullfuckery. Let's go ahead and hop into a look, shall we? All right, my face is all primed and prepped. For foundation, I'm going in with CoverGirl's Matte Made in the shade M30, which I'm also gonna mix with L90. And I think I'm gonna take some of that on my eyelids as well, just so that they're super primed. Fuck my ass with an Arizona cactus. I got it in my hair, damn it. Oh no, it's like a big ass glob of it too, shot. Okay, well it is what it is. Goodness, my beard is long today. I need to trim this thing. Makes my face look a little chubby. Eh. For concealer, I'm going in with a little Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Vanilla. I'm also gonna slap a tiny bit of this shit on my eyelids as well for a primer. You can still kind of see underneath my eyes the fact that I haven't been sleeping well, so I'm gonna take some NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop in the shade Vanilla. Pop that right under there too. If we're gonna do makeup, we might as well have it be two inches thick on my face. Then I'm gonna take some loose powder from LA Girl and just set it under my eyes to really set everything into place. And then so everything doesn't fall off during the wear time test, I'm gonna take some L'Oreal True Match in the shade W4 and just kind of lightly dust it everywhere. All right, my eyes are very well primed and still kind of tacky. If shadow doesn't stick to this, I'm fucking boycotting this brand. So... What the fuck did I do with the palette? Found it, Ron was resting his little head on it. I did notice that most of these shades turned color when they were over primer, so I think I'm just gonna make it a little bit less tacky and try to set it with some of Wealthy. So I'm gonna take some with this very, very scratchy Jeffree Star Morphe brush, and I'm only using this because it's a Jeffree Star review. Ow. Oh, oh, wow, that's actually going on really nicely. And there's very minimal kickback in the pan, too. Oh, well, I am impressed so far, shit yes. Ow, oh God. I even soaked these brushes in conditioner, too. Oh, I'm very intrigued by this creamy kind of pink color, so let's dip into Untouchable with a clean, fluffy brush. It picks up very, very nicely. Hopefully there isn't any fallout on my face. I should probably lay down some powder so that nothing falls out and ruins my foundation. But before I do that, let's quick take it on the eye. Let's go back and forth. Oh, that is pretty. Just sounded like Chewbacca. Oh, more like a vibrator that needs new batteries. Anyways, let's go ahead and keep blending this back and forth. Wow, that is so fucking pretty. With with this palette, I appreciate the fact that there are so many different shades because you could just slap a wing on this, put on some mascara and be all set. Or you have the option to add subtle pops of color here and there, or you can go really bold and bright. And so even though I'm not a huge blue fan, I do kind of like this palette. And I'm very surprised about that. Like I've been dreading reviewing this because I thought I was gonna hate the color scheme. I did color switch this brush so it's nice and clean. Let's dip into mint tea. Ooh, damn, that one has a lot of kickback. Whew. Let's lightly dip into mint tea. Whew. And we'll place that back and forth all along the crease line. I'm curious to see if it'll turn that pink into like a purpley shade. Ooh. Ooh, those do not go together very nicely. I mean, that is my own fault. Oh, but I don't like that. It's like regurgitated cotton candy. Or that time I threw up my 7-Eleven slushy. I am not a fan of that combination, but I do like the fact that the transition shade is kind of bluish. So I think I'll leave it. Let's dip into flourishing right here. It's a really pretty kind of teal. And I'm gonna start by placing that on the lid and kind of shaping out the crease that I want. Oh damn, that is a lot more vibrant in the pan than it is on the eye. See if we can kind of pack it on. I don't mind when you have to pack shades on because then you have the option to use it lightly or super bold. And it looks like this is layering on top of each other very well. It is very patchy though. Like even though I'm pressing more and more on, the patchiness isn't being resolved. I don't know if you see any patchiness, but in person, she's patchy. I am gonna end up blending the edges out, but if I can just kind of get a shape outlined, then I'll be set. Even though I'm probably gonna end up covering this with concealer, but at least we can see it on the eye. Oh my God, it just will not set down right there. Do you see it? It just comes right off when I touch it. Yeah. Fuck, it's patchy on this eye too. That's a bummer because I do really like that color. It's the same color as my couch. And I thought maybe it's the fact that I'm packing it on. Maybe it's a shadow that needs blended out. But even when I blend it out, it's just as patchy. I'm gonna blend those edges out with some blue blood. Remember how I said my allergies are acting up and I'm gonna do a very simple look? Well, I lied. Oh my God, it just will not lay down in certain areas. Like I primed my eyes with foundation, concealer, and I used an actual eye primer. But they were also kind of patchy when I swatched 
watched them too. And these do kind of become the same color. Like they are different, but not super different. And I could have picked different colors. I just wanted to see what these ones looked like, but they are both extremely patchy on me. Not enough to necessarily call it a deal breaker, but certainly not enough to make me want to use this again. But for other palettes, I primed my eyes this exact same way so many other times before without this issue. Let me soften those edges up a little bit with a tiny bit of mint tea. <sighs> Let's keep trying to make it work. This color that's on my eyelid, it is falling off everywhere and it's just starting to look super muddy. So I'm going to take a little bit of Blue Monday and I'm going to put it right over where I'm going to cut the crease. Ooh, <gasps> that shade's really pretty. I love that. Oh. And it's kind of a bummer because in person, they're so fucking vibrant, but I'm looking in my monitor and they're kind of dull. So hopefully you're able to see kind of what I'm seeing because the colors do really complement each other very well. Just wish they weren't so fucking patchy and inconsistent. Please let me know down in the comments below if you've used this palette and if you're running into any of the same issues that I am. If your shadows aren't coming out patchy, how are you getting them to be smooth? Oh God, this blue, I keep dipping into the pan and putting even more on the eyes because it's so pretty. And when it blends into that shadow that was already on my eye, it makes this beautiful kind of periwinkle purple. Like I almost don't even want to cover it up with a cut crease. But without doing 15 looks, I feel like that's the only way that I can really showcase a lot of these colors. I'm so torn because these shadows play together very, very well, but on their own, they're really not the best. Except for those first two shades we used, like those were really pretty. But I kind of have a feeling that most people don't get this palette for those two shades. They get them for the blues, which honestly are kind of sub par so far. Although Blue Monday is making some motion in the ocean, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but we'll keep on kind of building this up along the crease line. And then right underneath the crease, I'm going to lay down a little bit of, what is this, Undertaker? Just start right here on the outer corner and kind of push it into the socket. Oh, fuck, I'm so torn with this. Because I think you can create really pretty looks with this. It's just a little bit difficult to get there. You have to kind of finesse these shadows. And I'm not a fan of finessing. I'm the one that likes to be finessed. Oh, God, and there is quite a bit of fallout, so let me try to brush that away before it stains. Totally forgot to lay powder down, but fortunately there is nothing left behind, so we're good. To cut the crease, I'm gonna dip into the Jeffree Star Blue Blood Lip Collection, and I think I'm gonna cut it with Drug Lord. I didn't love it as a lipstick, and a lot of people said to cut the crease with it, so we're gonna try. Oh, yes. That actually works better than my concealer does. Wow. Wow. Oh, shit. Wouldn't be a Poplux video if I didn't drop at least one thing. I'm gonna dip back into it flourishing and kind of place it right here on the inner eye so that we have a nice little pop of color there. It is so patchy. Like it just will not lay down right there. Do you see that? And then when I try to blend it out, it just gets even worse. Just wanted a little teal right there, but it's so patchy on both sides. Ugh. All right, on a clean flat brush, I'm just gonna give it a spray with some setting spray. And let's dip into Entitled. Ooh, damn. That picks up very well. God, it also falls all over too. <sighs> but I'm gonna try to set this a little bit below where I cut the crease so that it's kind of like a double cut. No idea if I'll be able to do that because as I'm looking forward, it's transferring up. Maybe if I just like really press it in there. Oh, that's really pretty. All right, that is on there. It is underneath my eye. Let's see if it wipes away. <sighs> Yes, we are in the clear. It wiped away perfectly. Okay, just to be safe on this side, I am gonna put some translucent powder under here to catch that fallout. Totally should have done that from the beginning. God, that shadow is pretty. And I'm just gonna take that same brush and dip it into Ocean Ice. Actually, no, I think the little bitch needs to be a little bit more wet. Fortunate for this, I am very good at making things wet. Anyway, I'm gonna take some and press it right here on the outer corner and kind of slowly blend it into that teal. Oh my, that is quite patchy. Maybe we should pack that shit on. I guess once you pack it on, it doesn't look too bad. But the kind of glittery metallic quality that it has kind of disappears, which I am not mad about. I hate chunky ass glitter. But enough of it is still left to kind of give it a satiny finish. I really like that shade. Like patchiness aside, it's still kind of stunning in its own little fucked up way. Oh God, it burns in the eye though. Ooh. And right here in between the two colors, I think I'm going to blend out a little bit of Deceased. This is just a dry flat brush. I'm not going to put too much on there, but just kind of help the transition. Oh, 
Ooh, that's a really pretty color too. Ugh. Even though I'm not fully in love with this palette, I do have to admit that the colors work together very, very well. Like this is one of those kinds of palettes where it's actually kind of difficult to fuck things up, which I personally appreciate because if something can be fucked up, I will probably be the one to do it. But so far, everything is going very good. And I am wanting to put some of that metallic shade on my crease and I did kind of lose that white. So I'm going to go and reinforce it with some more drug Lord. Just like that. Oh, I like that. I wiped that brush off and I'm just going to spray it with some setting spray. Let's dip into this beautiful kind of pearly shade right here. And I'm just going to set that over that white that I just put down. Uh -huh, uh -huh. For the lower lash, what the fuck are we going to do? Um... God, some of the blue stuck down there, huh? Foundation looks so pretty today, too. Oh, no, it's down here as well. Well, that is unfortunate. Let's go ahead and start by smoking out some I'm Cold. And like usual, I'm just gonna take it back and forth all along the lower lash line. My God, that color does not want to lay down. It's almost, like, pointless. Okay, well, let's also take some blue blood and try that down there. Guess that's a little bit better. Okay, on that same brush, I'm going to mix some Blue Monday with some Flourishing and just go back and forth in that. And take that right up against the lashes. Still not super vibrant, and it is patchy, but at least there's a little bit of color happening. Keep on going in back and forth and just building it up. Honestly, it's really surprising me how not pigmented these are. Like, I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer or hate on this at all, because I really do want to love every product that I try. But at the same time, like, I gotta be honest with you. And this palette, even though the look we are coming up with, I think is really, really pretty. I don't know that I couldn't have created the same exact look from like the ColourPop Mar palette. And that palette certainly wasn't as pretty presentation wise, but it was also like a fifth of the price. Eh, I don't know. I'm gonna put a little bit more powder under the eyes because I really wanna see what that deep blue would look like down there. So on a little pointy brush, I'm gonna dip into Ocean Ice. That is so pretty looking on the brush. You probably can't even see that. If you can see that, is that not beautiful? Golly. Anyway, I'm just gonna take this and kind of smoke it out back and forth. It's so patchy. But if you can kind of pack it on and work it around there, the color that you're left with is really attractive. Oh, but those glitter chunks in the eye do not feel good. Oh, fuck. Very glad I put this powder down, though, because glitter is flying fucking everywhere. Woo, let's wipe this powder away and see what we're left with. Eh, I have no idea if this was somehow my fault. It probably was, but nothing is as vibrant as it is in the pan, even when I kind of pack it on. And I think I remember somebody even saying that, so I'm not the only one who's experiencing this. Is it ugly? No, it's not. It's very pretty, but you also have to really, really work each shadow. Eh, let's keep moving on. For my waterline, why don't we go in with some diamond? <gasps> oh, I like that. That's a good choice. Oh, fuck. I was going to do a wing with this color, and then I ended up not liking it, and it just looks like shit now. Well... We'll ignore that. And then just to hide the lash band, I am taking a little bit of liner and going super close to my real lashes. And then to finish this look off, I'm gonna take a little bit of Pop Lux Nightlife and place it right here on the inner corner just to really brighten things up. And maybe a touch of Pure Life as well. Boom, bitch. And here we are with the final look. For lips, I ended up using a combination of Titanic and then in the center, some Jawbreaker with Drug Lord. But this look, I actually really fucking like it. Was it easy to get here? No, not at all. Like, this is not an effortless look, but I do still think it's really pretty. Is it something that we haven't seen 15 times already on this channel? No. I mean, that could be my fault for not thinking of something new, but with that color palette and trying to stay true to my style, I don't know how I would have really mixed things up. Yes, you certainly can create quite a few different looks from this palette, but in the end, I think most of them are probably gonna look kind of the same. And really, just from where I'm sitting, I could point out five palettes that we could create this exact same look. My God, my fucking hair is everywhere. And to be honest, if I were to use those palettes, getting things to blend out probably would have been easier. It's not like this palette is absolute shit, but is it Jeffree Star quality? Not really. Maybe it's just me that was having issues with it, but it seems like more often than not with this palette, the shadows were patchy. A lot of them just didn't want to lay down, and then when they blended out, they looked weird. There was follow, but that is kind of to be expected, especially with these darker shades, so I'm really not gonna fault it for that. The shimmers, I thought were beautiful. They really, really complement every shadow that's in there. I do appreciate palettes that are difficult to fuck up, and I do think that is kind of this palette. But is this palette something that you absolutely need, or that I myself am probably ever 
gonna use again? No. There's just too many inconsistencies. Colors blend out to be the exact same thing. The color isn't super saturated. Yes, they are kind of on the pigmented side, but once they're in the eye, they kind of transform. Is the palette completely unworkable? No. But I also think the main feature here is the packaging. I do have to give this palette some credit though, because even though I'm pretty sure I packed like 10 pounds of eyeshadow on my lids, it doesn't really feel heavy at all. Like I have some serious allergies today, but I feel like I could wear this for like 15 hours and be fine. Usually I say, if you like the colors in this palette, then get it. You probably won't be disappointed. But with this, you honestly might be a little disappointed even if you like these colors. I'm just scared because there are a lot of inconsistencies here. Of course, anything can be worked with. And if you do like these colors, you probably could work with them. But at the same time, even though I do really like some of these colors, I don't want to work with them. So with all that being said, I really can't give you a final verdict until after we do the wear time test. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will see you in just a second. And we are back. We just hit the, I don't even know. It's honestly only been a few hours, but I've got to take this off because my eyes feel so fucking tired. I don't really blame that on the eyeshadow. I'm blaming it more on allergies. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. It does still look very, very pretty. I think it looks the same. What do you think? Oh my God, I'm about to fall asleep. I think it looks just as vibrant. If it's fading, it's fading very gracefully. Nothing's fallen underneath my eyes. But does that mean I like this palette? I don't know because as I was taking another look at this, I do think there are some shadows in here that are really good. Like those neutral ones that we used at first, that cream and that pink, those were beautiful. It's when we started getting into the more unique shades like the blues that shit really hit the fan. I thought that the shimmers that I used were really good, kind of excluding this blue. Like I think it looks prettier in the pan and then once it's on the eye, it kind of loses its prettiness. But then I really liked the way this blue looked on my crease and I thought this was okay. It was just patchy. And this dark blue and this light blue together were so pretty. But you really have to finesse the fuck out of them and work them around. I don't know if I really recommend this palette. I think if you're wanting this palette, don't get it for the quality. Get it more for the packaging, as sad as that is. Because for over 50 bucks, I think you could do way better quality wise with other brands. The packaging I think is really cute. It's my favorite part. But the rest of it, with a few exceptions, I think is just okay. I feel so bad saying that because this was so fucking hyped, but it was hard to work with. It was inconsistent. A lot of these were splotchy. It's just so below the normal Jeffree Star standards. But here we have it. I think this is honestly one of my favorite looks that we've created. So that does say something for the palette. Anyways, there you go. Like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which just changed from black to white, is available at thepoplix.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere in line that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.